Okay, in this video tutorial, we already know how to set up Robot C for programming. We've already done that. And so what you see on my screen is something that we've already uh, we've went through and we understand. So on this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to set up motors. That's the only thing that we're going to touch on this one is to set up your motors. All right. So over here on the left-hand side, we have several different uh, expandable uh, buttons. We're not going to use all of them. We're only going to use really just one for this purpose, and that is under natural language. If you don't see this over here, remember, every time you get on Robot C, we have to go to Robot, Vex Corte Cortex Communication Mode, USB only, and we have to go down to Platform Type and make sure that it says Vex 2.0 Cortex and Natural Language PLTW. If you don't have these selected, what I'm about to do over here will not look the same on your computer. So you want to make sure that you have done the correct steps in setting up this program. All right, so notice I already have my title. We have all of the information for my task description on this one. I'm just going to put um, learning how to set up motors in Robot C. Learning how to set up motors in Robot C. That's really the description of what we're doing here. All right. So in this, I'm just going to give you a brief description of what this means down here. Every program starts with a task main. So this task main is kind of like the beginning of the program. And notice we have a curly bracket. This curly bracket is right here. And notice we have an open curly bracket and a closed curly bracket. Every time you open up a curly bracket, you have to close a curly bracket. All right, so all of our code is going to be within those two curly brackets. If it's outside the curly brackets, it's not going to it's not going to understand it. Okay, so we got to put everything in this curly bracket. So I'm going to hit the plus sign right next to natural language, and it gives me another six expandable buttons. Setup, movement, robot motion, wait, until, there's a lot of them under until, and then special. Today we're only going to talk about robot motion. I'm no, sorry, sorry, movement is what I meant to say. This is the only thing we're going to talk about because it has our start motor and a stop motor. We may get into weight just for the sake of understanding how, uh, how a motor starts and stops, okay? So our first task, we want the motor to start, all right? So there right here is the command for start motor. Start motor, and then parentheses, motor port, and speed. So I'm going to click, hold, and drag that underneath that curly bracket. So that's telling me we're going to start a motor and here's the motor port right there and then at a certain speed. Alright, so the motor port is really... Sorry about that. So for the start motor, this motor port is what we're going to name the motor. So uh, you can name it anything you want. Uh, if you're going to have two motors like left and right, if you only have one motor, maybe just call it motor one. Uh, for this sake, I'm going to call it um, left motor. All right. You can call it whatever makes sense to you. But let's just say I'm going to have two motors, one on the left and one on the right. I'm going to call that the left motor. And then for speed, I can have a speed any, anywhere from 0 to 127. 127 is the max speed. All right, so I've got my left motor that's going to start at a speed of 127. So I'm going to tab over. Notice how this is all green here. All that green means is that it's pseudocode and that uh, the computer does not recognize it as code. All right, the computer does not recognize this as code when I put two dashes. Notice just one dash is red, two dashes it turns green. And then anything after those two dashes or those two backslashes will be green. So what am I, and all the pseudocode is, is I want to explain what I just did in this command. What did I do? Sorry about that. What did I do in this command? So what did I do? I start my left motor at the speed of 
127. Okay, that's what I did. Started my left motor at the speed of 127. Okay, and I'm going to click Enter, and it'll take me to another, uh, another line. So, I also, I know that I want the motor to stop at some point. So, I'm going to go up here, and I'm going to grab Stop Motor, and I'm going to drag it down, and there it is. What? And so, that's going to stop the motor. What motor do I want to stop? The left motor, because I just put that, right? So, I want this, I'm going to start the motor at 127, and then I want that same motor to stop. Why don't I have to put 127 in? It's because it's stopping, so it won't be at any speed at all. All right? So at, if I would just stop right here and be done with my program, the motor wouldn't do anything because it's starting and stopping at the same time. So it's starting, and then it's stopping. So we've got to put something in between those two so that it, the motor runs t um, a certain duration. So that's going to be under your weight. So let's go ahead and put, click the plus sign next to weight. And notice it says weight and wait time, and then there's a weight in milliseconds. I'm just going to do the regular weight, wait time. And I'm going to put it right in front of the stop motor, which will push stop motor to the next line. How long do I want it to wait? It's up to you, depending on what you want it to do. Maybe we just want it for five seconds. Notice that five turns green, because it recognizes it. So... And notice there always is a semicolon at the end of the line. It automatically puts that in there for you, but if you ever see it missing, you'll know that you'll need it. So I'm going to put another two backslashes, and I'm going to say motor. Uh, let's do left motor. Left, uh, do that again. Left motor will run for five seconds. And then stop motor, I'm going to tab over, put my pseudo code, and then I'm going to put left motor will stop. All right, now that's a pretty basic program. Notice all of my program is within the two curly brackets. There's one curly bracket, here's the second curly bracket. Everything is within those curly brackets. All right, now the only thing left to do is I've got to set up my left motor in motor and sensor setup. So this motor and sensor setup, it has four tabs at the top. Standard models, which we never we don't use, motors. There are 10 ports in your cortex, and you can have up to 10 motors uh, in your cortex. We only have one, and it's called left motor, and so I'm just going to put it in port one. So I'm going to call it left motor. Notice I used all lowercase on my left and all uppercase on my motor. A lot of times in programming you want to do that uh, and if you have that messed up and you don't use capitalization when you're supposed to it will normally give you an error message. So I'm going to call it left motor in port 1 and then I'm going to tell it what size of motor and for us we only use VEX 393 motors. So I'm going to click VEX 393 motor, and I'm going to say apply, all right, and then there's analog sensors, there's only eight ports for analog sensors, which we'll get into that some other time, and there's also a digital sensors tab, and uh, we'll get into that another time as well, so I'm going to click OK, and there we have it, there is our code for starting a motor, waiting five seconds, and stopping a motor.